Welcome to video number 18, Extruder Assembly and Mount. In this video we are going to cover the rest of the extruder assembly process, including hot end assembly, fan assembly, motor assembly, and then actually mounting the extruder assembly onto the X carriage onto the printer. Our first step here is we're going to solder up the thermistor just like we did for the heat bed. Only now we're soldering up the thermistor for the hot end. And it's going to be the exact same process we followed with the first thermistor. Uh, only your thermistor may look a little bit different for the hot end, but it's going to be the exact same process. So instead of showing a video, I'm just going to show you a series of step-by-step -step photos that I did whenever I went through this process. And as you can see, you're going to have to take your thermistor and fit it through the hole that's the appropriate size on your hot end to fix it into place. And you can also see that I've got some protective uh, tubing over the legs of the thermistor, just kind of like that yellow tape we had on the other thermistor. After we get the thermistor wired into place and get the connectors connected, uh, just like we did with the first thermistor, uh, now we need to do the same thing for our heater cartridge. Now yours may look different than mine or it may look the same, but mine's already wired up ready to go, so all I have to do is plug it into the big hole and tighten the set screw. So once you actually get your thermistor and your heater cartridge put into place, uh, take a zip tie and some electrical tape and real neatly secure it and tie it back. Uh, so as you're not going to break the solder joints and you make it nice and secure. Now uh, we're going to take our hot end assembly so far and we're going to plug it into the hole on the bottom of the extruder body and then we're going to fix it with two screws and two nuts. Now you want to have your wires coming out of the back uh, I guess the opposite side of where your idler springs are pointing. Now that we're finished with the hot end assembly part of the extruder, we're going to go ahead and get the fan ready to go. Now your fan is already going to have the wiring connector we need, but we need to extend it. And we're going to do that by taking two more longer wires and we're going to splice it in the middle of the original wire in the connector. And that's what you can see me doing in this uh, picture step by step process I've got going on here. So follow the same steps we've done with the previous wires. Make sure you use your heat shrink and your electrical tape and go ahead and solder that splice into the fan wires. So once we have our fan wired up correctly, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take four more screws and four nuts 
and we're going to fix that fan onto our fan duct before we go ahead and put it onto the extruder body. Now there's a little bit of debate as to which direction your fan needs to be facing. <clears throat> as in you can have it either blowing air onto the hot end to cool it or you can have it extracting the hot air and just pulling the heat away from the hot end. I've actually done it both ways. Um, now in the video I'm, I have my fan facing where it's blowing air onto the hot end but I actually went back and reversed it uh, to pull the air away because I think that me blowing the air directly onto it was causing my hot end temperature to fluctuate. And it actually did temporarily, well not temporarily, but pretty quickly fix my issue uh, once I reversed the direction of the fan. So in this step, you might want to have the letters on the fan facing outward as to pull the air instead of push the air towards the hot end. Once your fan is mounted onto the fan duct, go ahead and take your screw and your nut and mount it onto the extruder body. And once it's mounted on there, you can go ahead and take your fan wires and run them alongside your thermistor and your heater cartridge wires on your hot end and tape them together to make uh, one piece so as to keep them out of the way during your prints.
Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get the extruder motor mounted. And this is our last motor that we're going to use. So we need to go ahead and get this fixed up. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to need to put the Wade small gear onto the motor so that we can fit it against the larger motor. And as you can see, I'm dropping a nut into the small gear so that I can I can set my grub screw and at least get it started so that I can tighten it onto the motor shaft here in a second. So now I'm going to go ahead and shove my small gear onto the shaft and I'm going to tighten it onto the flat edge of the motor shaft to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to pull the motor sideways onto the body so that I can get the teeth lined up just right and go ahead and get a couple of screws started on the motor. And for here I'm only going to put two screws into the motor to mount it because it really doesn't need any more than that. But it is important, the position of your motor, uh, because you want to be able to turn the gears by hand to rotate the shaft on the motor. And so you don't want the, you don't want the teeth on the gears to be touching too tightly, and you don't want it to be too far apart. Uh, you want to find that sweet spot to where, you know, you can turn the gears pretty, pretty good, but you have a good solid bite, so as you're not going to miss any steps once the motor actually starts turning. And once you find that position, go ahead and tighten down your screws and make it nice and snug. This is the final step for the extruder assembly process. Uh, now that we have everything on the extruder completely assembled, we need to get it mounted onto the X carriage. And to do that, we're going to take our four M4 nuts and our M4 by 20 millimeter screws, and we're going to go ahead and put it into place. And to do that, we need to go ahead and drop all four of the M4 nuts into the designated spots on the extruder body that were meant to hold the nuts in place while you fix the screws.
So very simply, after you get the nuts in place, go ahead and mount it to the back of the X carriage and get all your screws started and go ahead and wrench them down and get them tight. After that, you should be able to move the gears by hand and everything should be fluid on the x-axis and that will be the the end of us putting together the extruder assembly <laughs>